the worst thing I can think of is for my children to be raised into this like I was. Mary, can I tell you something? Sure. On November 2nd, 1983, no matter what you hear or what you see, promise me you won't get out of bed. Mary came from a family of hunters. She was a hunter herself before she married John. And she uh, became a, sort of a myth to the boys because she died trying to save Sam. There was no way I could have foreseen the impact that her character would have on the show and how much they held her close. Mary is the core of really our series and she's the core of our mythology. It all starts with her. You killed him. When Mary was young, Azazel, the L.O.I. demon, kind of our first big bag, came to her and made her a deal. John Winchester had been killed, he would bring her back. All Mary had to do was let Azazel in to a room 10 years in the future. And Mary agreed. He uh, probably knew that was coming, but not where or when. And that room he walked into was her son's room. And he's the one that dripped demon blood in Sam's mouth and kind of started him on the path to becoming a vessel for Lucifer. And that's the last time Dean saw her. He witnessed that. Uh, Sam never knew her at all. How she was manipulated, the choices she made, really shaped, you know, 11, 12 seasons of myth. Her impact on their lives has been more than probably anyone else on our show. Mama's back. It poses some interesting twists just in relationships because you know, Sam and Dean have really never known their mother from an adult standpoint. Dean has very vague memories of her as a child and Sam has virtually none. I've come back many times, but always as a ghost or a vision or a hallucination. Amara brought her back to be with Dean. That was a gift that Amara thought she was uh, giving Dean. When Mary comes back after being in heaven for some 30 odd years, she's not sure that it was a gift at all. Uh, she's happy to see her boys again, but these aren't the boys that she remembers or the boys that she's lived with uh, in heaven for 30 plus years. Do you still like pie? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's a familiarity there that is, I guess, blood. But at the same time, a stranger in our house, so to speak. And she feels as strange to this land as we kind of feel <clears throat> having her around. Is that a, a computer? Welcome to the future. And reestablishing the relationship with them as a mother to adults is, is a whole different situation. I can't believe I let you talk me into this. I'm your mother. You have to do what I say. They're so grateful for her return, they're a little bit blind to what's going on with her. You okay? No. And that there's actually a lot of internal conflict she's struggling with that Dean in particular is sort of afraid to process. Uh, I think he's in a bit of denial about what's going on with her. As a hunter and as a strong woman, she's not going to let it show how much everything is overwhelming her. She's sad, She, her husband is gone, and everything has changed for her, but she's gonna sort of take it in and deal with it internally. Sam has never had a good relationship with his parents um, because he didn't know his mom and his dad he never got along with. And so I think Sam is almost more meeting her as a fellow adult you know, because he didn't have any memories. He didn't remember mom. He didn't remember the taste of her sandwiches and the smell of the candles she liked to burn and whatnot, whereas Dean did, and he held on to a lot of that. He's having, a, I think, a difficult time processing the fact that all of a sudden his mother's back and, and, and alive and watching and trying to adjust to her and watching her try to adjust to them, it makes for some very uncomfortable moments. Why don't I take this from Solo, okay? We just, we don't know what we're walking into here. We never know, we're hunters. I can handle myself, okay? All right, good talk. You tell me where my brother is and I might take it easy on you. Oh, please don't. 
Mary admires the fact of how good they are at what they do, but she's terribly fearful that she's not going to have to be witness to something really bad happening to them. It's a bittersweet pill for her. I think that Mary has taken on responsibility for all of it. John wasn't a hunter until she died, and the boys would never have been hunters had she not been a hunter. I spent my life running from this, from hunting, and I got out. I never wanted this for you and Sam. It's not totally her fault, but the responsibility and the guilt is strong. So to even be around her sons, she has to be around hunting, this thing she's been running from, this thing that she associates with death, because she saw so many people die. It's one thing to put herself through, it's another thing to watch her sons go through. I think it's very difficult for her. No mother wants that for her kids. Get away from my boys. She not only has maternal instincts, but she also has hunter instincts. <laughs> and these are things that she thought she'd left behind years ago, and she's a little surprised to find out how deep that imprint goes. And the boys are stunned. Holy crap. To see their mother actually kicking ass is uh, sort of a revelation. I found a case. In the disorientation of coming back three decades later, you go back to what your root was. It's probably nothing. I just thought I might get out there, stretch my legs. And I think that being raised as a hunter, having been a hunter in her, a good portion of her adult life, that's where she thinks she'll find her footing. Agent Shirley Partridge out of the Minneapolis field office. These are my partners, Agent Cassidy and Agent Bonaducci. In these first few episodes, what's interesting is that being a hunter is also an escape from her internal struggle. And I think at first that's comforting, but even that has a really strong downside and she realizes that. She got possessed by a ghost. She almost killed her sons. Money's gone. Mary overcomes the ghost that's possessing her and basically frees up Sam for a moment to go and overcome the situation. She has a lot of guilt about that when, you know, when it comes out. Even though Mary broke through for the moment, the fact that that could happen, very upsetting for her, and really sort of makes her wonder whether her being around is the right idea. I have to go. It's not because she doesn't love them, it's because she can't be in this place where, one, they're in danger, and two, she doesn't understand how she fits in this world. It seems like our worst nightmares come true, we're losing her again. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I'm sure the boys see it as an abandonment. As a parent, Mary doesn't feel like there's any choice. I think that it's very clear why hunters hunt alone. You endanger the person that you're with because they can be used as leverage. And I think that that is something that both Sam and Dean both see very clearly. As happy as they are to have their mom back, she's a liability as well. She just desperately needs a time to go collect herself and, and come to grips with her new reality now that she's starting to accept it. I think her story is just beginning. I think, you know, she walks away from episode three, she's got John's journal. She wants to go out there and kind of find her place in the world a little bit. Just kind of understanding where Samity came from, I think is really important to her. What's been so exciting about Mary and playing a role that I don't often get to play is someone who's just so hardcore and fearless. And so to see Mary as the badass that we were hinted at when we saw her in flashbacks. And now you don't just see it in little bits and pieces, you're gonna see Mary <laughs> just taking no prisoners. There will be a lot of bloody noses. <laughs> I think the fans will enjoy this sort of uh, iconic character that they knew but didn't know very well to uh, get to know her a lot better. Yeah.